everyone, uh, Megan Baker here. Uh, really sorry that I can't be there with you uh, in person, but I'm glad to have the opportunity to um, introduce myself uh, here and share a little bit about my project um, virtually. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, this is a picture here of the University of Arizona, where I'm currently working on my PhD um, at a PhD program in the Center for Higher Education, Policy, and Practice. Um, the University of Arizona is located in Tucson, Arizona. Um, it's a large uh, public Research One institution um, in the southern uh, part of the state. Uh, I have quite a long, rich family history in Tucson. Um, I also received my undergraduate degree at the University of Arizona in 2008 um, in interdisciplinary studies. While I did uh, pursue my master's degree elsewhere, uh, internationally actually uh, in the Netherlands, I uh, returned for my doctoral work in Tucson. Um, so while I'm there, uh, I will speak a little bit about the research that I'm doing there called the Future of Gen Ed, a Big Ideas Interdisciplinary Thinking Project. Um, but before I share a little bit about that, um, I also do want to highlight kind of my interest and passion for uh, international education, which uh, largely informs the, the Fulbright project that I'll be doing. Um, so notably, uh, in, in 2010, as an undergraduate student myself, had the opportunity to spend um, a semester abroad in, um, in Chile, in, in Viña del Mar, um, actually at the uh, Universidad del Cebañas, where I will be returning for the Fulbright. Um, and so, as you can imagine, uh, a really exciting opportunity for me to be back now, you know, 12 years later. Um, having finished that program was a place I'd always hoped that I'd have the opportunity to return, and so um, it's really special for me uh, to get to do that in this capacity. Um, after graduating from um, my undergraduate, I spent two years in Thailand, uh, in the northernmost city of uh, Chiang Rai. Um, I was one year on a Fulbright English teaching assistantship uh, program where I worked at kind of a hybrid a middle school, um, high school, public school, um, and then stayed a second year uh, at a language institute there. Um, also in my own community really involved uh, in kind of international uh, education efforts. I uh, worked several years um, at our community college in the uh, refugee program doing uh, ESL instruction and curricular development. Um, and now uh, working with the COIL work, um, the COIL work uh, in the Honors College. Um, also my advisor at the University of Arizona, Dr. Jenny Lee, uh, is quite a big, strong advocate of international education. Um, and so working with her um, also really inspires my interest in, in international education. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, the work that I've been doing and how that informs the Fulbright work. Um, although they are not the same project, um, you'll see some um, some parallels here. So uh, this is a picture of my supervisor, Dr. Um, John Pollard. Uh, John Pollard and I have worked together for uh, almost, this is our fourth year working together now, uh, on a series of kind of curricular development projects um, in the Honors College, but also the broader institution. Um, most notably, a three-year grant-funded project called um, the Big Ideas Interdisciplinary Thinking Project, where we help to um, develop a series of team-taught uh, cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary general education courses for undergraduate students, and then conducted um, educational research on student learning within that model. Um, also quite uh, highly involved in the larger general education uh, reform process that's happening at the University of Arizona. There is a shift towards more interdisciplinary learning experiences, um, which we'll call building connections. And so um, we have been supporting that process, a lot of instructional um, instructional support and uh, kind of curricular uh, design in this space. Um, and then third being this uh, COIL project, which um, we'll be embarking on soon. And so, oops, sorry about that. Um, to talk a little bit about the project, so uh, broadly speaking, I can think of it as an examination of student learning uh, in collaborative online international learning classrooms, um, or COIL. And so what is COIL? COIL is a specific pedagogical approach or method that brings um, two or more faculty together faculty from different institutions and different cultural national contexts. They come together to co-design and co-teach a course or an academic unit that's designed to bring learners together through virtual means to, you know, collaborate 
uh, learn, discuss, uh, alongside each other through virtual online platforms. Um, and so COIL uh, really kind of took off and originated, I should say, in, in 2004 in the uh, uh, SUNY network in, in New York, but has continued to grow in popularity, um, largely because of its um, kind of importance in our new uh, online and international uh, educational space. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because it helps to contextualize um, this project and, and its importance. So um, in higher education, there are several shifts that are really shaping uh, our teaching and learning landscape. But um, I highlight two here that are of kind of particular um, importance for this work. One being a, the push for internationalizing the curriculum, sometimes referred to as internationalization at home, um, and also the uh, growth in hybrid and online learning. So when it comes to internationalization at home or the internationalization of curriculum, this is really looking at um, our efforts as uh, colleges and universities to incorporate more international and intercultural um, dimensions into our, uh, not only our curriculum, but into our teaching uh, practices. So you might think about foreign language instruction or uh, kind of course content that focuses on international issues or intercultural um, dimensions. Um, it might look like your teaching practices, uh, diversity in the classroom, uh, designing courses around large um, kind of wide-spanning global issues like sustainable development goals. Um, these might uh, would all be considered examples of internationalization at home, as is uh, COIL itself. And then alongside that push, you also see a growth in hybrid and online learning. Uh, when I applied for the Fulbright grant, which feels like, you know, forever ago now, um, Already, uh, there was a case to be made about the, the um, enormous growth in online delivery of education. Um, and then since then, in the last um, two years with the pandemic, you know, we've seen a, just a rapid acceleration of um, online learning that has really, um, while unfortunate to have the project delayed, um, actually makes this work kind of more timely um, and relevant than ever as uh, growth in COIL continues to um, expand. And it's really seen as a kind of an innovative, low-cost um, method for promoting internationalization in your classrooms that doesn't require, you know, um, physical mobility. So uh, really, really um, central in this moment. So that's kind of the larger landscape in which uh, you can think about my, my project and my work. And a little bit about the project specifics. I will be, um, as I mentioned before, at the Universidad Adolfo Ibanez, a private institution uh, located in Viña del Mar, here right on the coast in the center of the country. I'm just north of uh, Santiago. Um, why Adolfo Ibanez? Well, it is um, stunning. So, uh, of course, uh, I could say that, but no. Um, in reality, uh, a much more, <laughs> much more important reasons. Um, Adolfo Ibanez, it has, um, they're quite uh, key innovators in this COIL space. They have recently established a, a, their own COIL unit um, or department on campus, which is a collaboration between you know, our teaching and learning department, but also their um, Department of International Relations, so speaking to that internationalization at home um, effort. So um, it's a growing focus. There's a lot of kind of back support for this um, methodology. We can also see that in the design of new high-tech classrooms developed to support hybrid uh, learning and engaged virtual learning. Um, and then you can also see this in their ongoing 5 plus 5 COIL project, which is an effort to uh, develop a series of COIL courses, I believe 25 uh, across five different um, different universities in uh, Latin and South America, uh, Mexico, uh, Colombia, Peru, um, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Chile, and Ecuador. Um, and so uh, all centered around sustainable development goals. And so you see a lot of uh, push here at Adolfo Ibanez for COIL. Um, kind of eager to learn more and to do more in this space. So there's a lot for me to learn, uh, a lot for me to bring back to my own um, institution, um, but also a really fertile ground for collaboration um, as the work that I can do um, will support their own 
their own efforts as well. Um, I screenshotted here just from their own uh, COIL website, you know, COIL experience, student experiences, what do we know? It's kind of like, coming soon. You know, this is uh, true. There is uh, a lack of knowledge about students' own experiences on COIL, and so this is a specific area that I'll really be digging into um, and will contribute to during my um, Fulbright project. All right, so um, project specifics, I want to highlight kind of two main areas. There's like an innovation uh, course creation component, and then there's the corresponding educational research component, which work together in this project. So uh, on an innovation front, uh, in order to do this research, we first need to have the kind of pilot course uh, interventions to study. And so um, we have already been in the process of establishing these partnerships and developing these coils over the um, past year. It has been another benefit, perhaps, of the delay, is it has really allowed us to get some of that um, heavy back work done uh, to support the project. And so we'll be running um, four pilot COIL courses this semester and another three the following semester. Um, well, only two of those partnerships are specifically with the Adolfo Ibanez. We also have four um, in partner institutions in Mexico and, and one in Germany. Um, and so that's a big piece of it in which we'll be conducting research on um, learning within those courses. Um, and the, but we'll also be supporting uh, instructors in the COIL uh, methodology. So I'll be working with um, the COIL department at uh, Adolfo Ibanez to create some uh, COIL workshops, instructional support workshops for instructors about the COIL methodology, kind of based on where the need is there and um, where support is, is really um, requested. Um, but also using this as a space to spotlight the data that we are collecting, what we're finding, and to be able to disseminate, um, to disseminate those findings and hopefully help to shape practice moving forward. So that's the innovation piece. Um, in some ways, kind of the most uh, challenging, I think time-consuming um, piece of it all. Um, as you can imagine, especially when establishing partnerships um, with the University of Arizona and our partners, just uh, challenges of time, literally time change, um, but also uh, academic semesters and differing academic calendars. You might have different curricular priorities or expectations about curricular uh, planning and, and collaboration. And so all of those things that we've been working on that help to, um, you know, teach us more about the process and what are some of the uh, challenges of establishing COIL um, learning classrooms. Um, so alongside the innovation, we have the research piece. And so um, to think about the research, um, you know, I focus here on kind of two key gaps, one being a lack of knowledge on um, actual student experiences within COIL learning. Um, often when we, uh, more broadly, when we do educational research, it tends to focus more on um, the inf uh, instructor or the faculty experience in the design and implementation, and it's a bit more challenging to uh, conduct research on actual student um, experiences, uh, perceptions, and their learning that happens just uh, takes a little bit more um, back work um, to do this and in intention. And so uh, my work will really be focusing on student learning, student perceptions, and experiences within COIL. Um, and I also highlight, because um, it's important to the project, that there is a lack of research um, looking at U.S. and uh, Chilean, but more broadly, like uh, Latin American, South American. Uh, partnerships. Most of the COIL research has looked at partnerships with U.S. and um, European partners, and so um, not a lot is known um, here, and so I think that's another fertile kind of grounds for um, investigation that uh, I look forward to doing. So our intellectual goals, like the research goals, um, you know, better understanding the development of intercultural learning uh, within this COIL model, um, again, providing insight on student perceptions of uh, this model, this transnational learning model, um, but also how it plays out across different institutional and international contexts. And then to a lesser extent, but also important, um, faculty experiences with this model. And so, you know, what's it like for them designing and implementing what can be learned from their own experiences. So data collection will occur primarily through survey analysis, um, surveying of students at the end of their COIL experience, also faculty. Um, but also an analysis of student work, and particularly reflective writing that's designed to 
um, elicit some insight about their experiences with specific course curriculum and intercultural learning goals. Um, and then, of course, because of my role with supporting the design and implementation, um, I'll be uh, active in that classroom observation um, aspect as well. All right, so that's the project, um, you know, and uh, it's important to, you know, take a step back and remember uh, kind of our impact goal, especially as an uh, educator. It's really to uh, inform the design and delivery of our COIL courses, to improve the design and delivery of COIL courses, um, to better serve our students, to better um, support our faculty. And so um, supporting the efforts at Adolfi Banyas, but also the efforts um, at the University of Arizona Honors College, where I work. And so it's kind of a neat project to, um, to get to learn alongside each other in that way. All right, so that's my project, um, and I know I am not there to answer your, I'm sure, many questions, um, but please uh, feel free to uh, chat with me further on Friday. I'm really hoping that I'll be able to make that um, event at the uh, Ritz-Carlton if everything goes smoothly. Um, also, please open invitation, come visit me in, in Vimea. I uh, would love to um, get to know you all better. And then um, email me, WhatsApp me, you know, um, however you want to reach out. I'm here for questions uh, if you take an interest in this project or, or, or just want to come visit. Um, but anyways, I look forward to learning more about your projects and uh, meeting you all soon.